Kia ora folks! Uh, today I want to make myself a machinist hammer. Now what that is, is it's a dual sided hammer. One side's copper, the other side's leather. The leather acts a bit more deadening, softer, so it's a bit like a rubber mallet. You're just going to be able to use it for much more delicate work. The other side's copper. Copper is much softer than all the metals that I'm using for fabrication, so it shouldn't leave tooling marks, which is, you know, fantastic, especially at the moment I'm using, I'm doing uh, a lot of table fab and stuff. We don't want any machine, uh, tooling marks, you know, any dents or anything on the, you know, the legs, etc. Because, you know, once it's painted, that would look pretty rough and unprofessional, which we do not want. Um, also, like, if you're chucking something up in the lathe, uh, and, you know, you just need to square it off or whatever, and you just need some little love taps, this would be perfect for it. So that's kind of where this fits in. Um, yeah, between a rubber hammer and a you know hardened steel lump hammer. So it's in between those two. Yeah, right, let's jump over to the bench and I'll kind of show you what I'm thinking. I'm not going to use a CNC plaza cutter because uh, I'm aware that possibly not all you folks out there have one. So yeah, let's jump over to the bench and show you what I'm thinking. Right, the plan at the moment is to use this 40mm uh, round stock. We'll cut this down obviously, but it'll have a hole in the middle and that's where the handle will be inserted through. Then on each end of this we'll have some tubing, this tubing right here, and that's what we'll use to captivate the copper and the leather sides of the hammer. Then for the handle I'll use this ancient piece of Totra, it's possibly 100 years old, not fully sure, but it's just an old fence paling, and yeah, it'll be gorgeous to make a functional tool out of this, and yeah, recycle this and give it a breath of new life. So yeah, anyway, that's the plan. Not sure how we're going to stick to that, but uh, yeah, let's start with that centerpiece of the hammer. Right, that was some major drama to cut this uh, oval out. First of all, it took ages. Uh, second of all, I got stung in the neck and the finger by a wasp. No idea why. Just standing there doing my thing, stung in the neck, and then I grabbed it and it stung me in the finger. It's pretty unfortunate, I guess. And then a blooming caught my finger. So, overall, my thumb. Is that a finger? Don't know. Anyway, dramas. Right, let's uh, jump into the drill press, cut out a backing plate so we can uh, start prepping the two actual heads of the hammer. Right, uh, before we jump to the bench to start welding, I need to show you my new welder. Uh, pretty cool purchase, uh, except the fact it was unintended. Uh, my other welder decided to go to welder's heaven, um, its motherboard released all its magical pixie dust and has stopped working. So. I decided to get myself a proprietary MIG welder rather than getting a multi-processing machine. Possibly that's why it didn't last very long, so I'm hoping this lasts a bit longer. I'm also moving into a little bit more industrial work, so uh, a high duty cycle is kind of a must at this time. Um, yeah, still learning how to set it up, so don't judge me too harshly. Anyway, let's uh, start using it. Right, so what we're doing now is just welding everything together. This is... Uh, the little sandwich plate is going to have a captive nut, it also just needs to be welded on the back before we join everything together like so, otherwise the thread would just come out. Uh, these are the little cups that will hold the leather and the copper, and uh, yeah, that's it, it's pretty simple. I'll um, just join these together. Right, so the welds went fantastic, got penetration all the way through at least 4 mils because I can see it on the inside here, just a little bit of penetration, so that's really good uh, for strength wise. Now the welds look terrible, um, mm, if I wanted nicer welds you should V this out and I'd you know, if I'd V'd it out I'd have been able to lay the, you know, the MIG bead in there a little bit more, been a bit more flush, a little bit nice, uh, nicer wetting out if that makes sense, uh, but I didn't. Uh, it's faster, you, it wasn't fully necessary for this job, so I'll just have to use the grinder and clean this up. Right, so what we're doing now is making the copper head of the hammer. We've got that thread in there, we've put a nut on there that's going to sit about a centimetre up proud. 
The reason we've done that is when we pour that copper in there, we want it to flow underneath and around that nut, so when it hardens and becomes homogenous, it's got a, that nut locked in there and mechanically uh, bound, so it's become a captive nut. The reason we have to do that is copper doesn't bind to mild steel at all, and uh, the reason I've gone for a thread, uh, like a nut, rather than just a hook, is because I want to replace this. So I want to be able to unthread it eventually once this becomes ruined, melt it down, and recast it. We don't want to throw away this hammer at all. So, that's my plan. Uh, we've got this little skirt as well that will go on top so we can pour the uh, copper proud and make sure it's a good hammerhead. Right, let's get the furnace going and see if this works. Right, it's a new day. Uh, not a new me though. I am extremely tired. Uh, couldn't get this to work at all. I spent uh, a good a good long time trying to get propane to work. I tried forced induction with propane. I tried a lot of things. Just wasn't getting hot enough. Don't know why. Uh, but that's okay. What we're going to try and use today is coal. Now coal is pretty energy dense, slash very energy dense, and you can extract quite a lot of that, uh, more than propane. Uh, so we should be hopefully getting a bit hotter than we were yesterday. Um, remember coal, not charcoal. Uh, coal is considerably more energy dense than charcoal. Right, let's uh, start this up and see if we can get this to work. Right, we've had some success. Uh, was it easy? Not at all. Uh, it melted the steel crucible, which was uh, amazing. Uh, also the steel lining of the furnace, that's not a thing anymore. Uh, my only success was using my little graphite crucible. Not designed for this, I don't think. But it worked. It's a bit buggered now. Um, but yeah, we were able to use coal, the hairdryer, and my graphite crucible, and we got a six, hopefully a successful copper casting. Right, let's put this on the bench and uh, have a look at it. Look at that! That is fantastic. Now it does have a little bit of a porous bubble in the middle, but I'm not concerned about that. I was initially thinking of cutting this flat, but why would I? As soon as you use this a couple of times, that is going to mushroom out and flatten. So yeah, perfect. I'm uh, quite lucky, I guess. Right. Let's uh, work on the other side and start getting this leather thing uh, sorted out. Right, I need a piece of leather and uh, my leather apron seems to be on hand. Oh, that's, that's a rag. Oh, that's terrible cut, Finley. Gosh, I didn't do two cuts, didn't I? Right, so the plan at the moment is to I've cut the last edge down on an angle, we pull it round like so, and the reason we've done that is so when it's in there, it's actually got no leading edge that's, you know, free, does that make sense? So this is much harder to pull at, uh, rather than, you know, when it had this, if you imagine like this, that flat top edge was just like that, it's just going to pull and tear, so we just want to try and tuck the edge down. Right, so we're just working on the handle now, so that's uh, fantastic. I'm going for about 350 mils. Um, it's a similar length to this uh, framing hammer. Now, in the background, I've got the hammer. The bit of leather's just soaking in some boiling water. Now, I don't actually know what it's going to do. I just want it to be a little bit harder. I find whenever I use my leather gloves, um, if I get them wet and then leave them, they get much harder. So, that's what I'm trying. Anyway, let's... Uh, Cut myself the handle. Right, I've moved the camera. Um, unfortunately, I was just filming my shoulder. So that was cool, wasn't it? Right, we have a billet of uh, timber now. Uh, you might just call it a piece of wood, but uh, I'm going to call it the billet. Um, it's looking gorgeous. Really loving the colour. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I just need to figure out how I'm going to round it. Whether or not I'm going to use the uh, plane. Uh, or am I just going to use the belt sander? I'm not sure yet. Um, looks really nice though, doesn't it? Right, I'll be... You'll probably see what I choose. Um, I just need to do some testing. Right. So, uh, what I've decided to do is just hold it and just, you know, just take the corners off. Switch it around. Um, I'm finding using the plane very therapeutic, um, especially compared to the belt sander. That's just noisy and 
Yeah, pain, isn't it? So, this is uh, what I'm going to go with. Right, so the handle's come along really nicely. I've got a bit of a flare at the bottom so it doesn't just fly out of my hand. Um, we don't want that. Uh, now, putting the head on, which is probably the most important thing, uh, we've got to add wedges. Now, what the wedge does is once the handle's, you know, the head's seated on the handle, we hammer the wedge in and it just widens that top and mechanically binds the ha um, head of the hammer to the handle. Uh, if you don't do that, this is going to fly off, you know, smack someone in the knee or something. Just imagine. Not good. So anyway, uh, outside of that scenario, you need to add yourselves a wedge, and that's what does that um, flaring. Now, make sure there's no point. You want to have this flat ground, uh, so it's just flat. So when you hammer it in, it crushes the fibers in, uh, and doesn't crack it or split it. Because if it's a point, it's just going to split its way in. You know, if you're using an axe, it's the same thing, but just much smaller. Uh, when you use the hammer, it's, that crack is going to travel down and ruin the hammer. So, just something to keep in mind. This also works for framing. If you, you know, you get to the end of your timber, and you just don't want it to split, you can flatten that end of that nail. Uh, it will still go in, and uh, yeah, reduce the chances of that timber splitting. Right. Enough of that, let's uh, join these two. That's another thing as well. When you're seating the hammer, you don't hammer it on, you drop it on the handle. So if this hammer, this head was ever coming loose, you smack it down, you see it seats it. So you just... Just like so. Right, we're just going to cut that end off. Um, it has split, and I look like a real tit now, don't I? When I was saying, oh, it won't split. Uh, my only thing is, these were considerably bigger than I would have usually used. I would have gone for three mil, um, but I was feeling extra, extra today. So, uh, yeah. If you're following along and you don't want it to look like it's cracked, go thinner than five mil. Just a wee... Yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is. It's fine. Right, got myself some boiled linseed, and we're just going to you know, coat this in some boiled linseed, obviously. Now, boiled linseed is actually a really funny uh, thing. So, what they found was linseed oil itself um, really didn't soak into wood very well. Now, it did soak in, it did add, you know, a bunch of protective things, uh, but it just took forever to soak in. So, I'm uh, meaning, like, months. Uh, so, what they ended up doing was, if they boiled it, they found it soaked in much faster, you could wipe it on and off, and uh, yeah, so they used to boil the linseed to make it a much more effective product. Now what they do is, obviously boiling linseed is just not efficient enough, so people that have got the, you know, the companies that want to make money with boiled linseed, is they actually use a chemical process that emulates uh, what happens to linseed when it's boiled. So they add this chemical, and uh, yeah, so when it says it's boiled linseed oil, it's actually not boiled, it's just got the additive in it that makes it acts like boiled linseed, uh, but for marketing they call it boiled linseed, so people know what it is. Does that make sense? Anyway, bit of trivia for you people out there if you're watching. Uh, now, this is looking quite gorgeous. Now we'll put it on and then once it's dried in, soaked in, I'll probably leave it soaking overnight. Uh, it just helps us, stops it splitting and stuff. I'll then uh, buff it off because the worst thing, you don't want to be holding some oily thing, do you? So, just give it a nice coating, nice thick layer for now. Right, just adding a bit of personalization and my initials. Right, so we're just giving the hammer a wee test to, you know, check if it actually works as a hammer, uh, as well as to see if the copper head is soft enough to not leave any tool marks or scalloping. Right, 
Right, looking at the piece of steel, you can clearly see the difference between the two sides. This was the copper head, and that was the framing and lump hammer. You can actually feel all these blemishes, and they're very visible and uh, a little bit deep. Where this copper headed hammer hasn't left any physical marks, uh, it's not visible, uh, nor can you feel anything with your finger or nail. So, super, super impressed. Now, I ended up I did actually give the copper headed hammer some really substantial smacks. Um, it would leave a little mark, but it would just wipe off. Um, I'll just demonstrate that, sorry. So, genuinely a really hard hit, uh, but if you just wipe that, that blemish just disappears. Right, the hammer. I am really happy with how this has turned out. It's a nice uh, feel, it's got nice weight to it, and uh, overall, just really pleased. The handle really does look quite gorgeous in my opinion. It really does tell quite the story with these really old, uh, you know, age cracks in it and just the overall look and feel of it. Uh, I still can't believe it's turned out from this, you know, old piece of uh, Totra uh, baton into this you know, gorgeous handle that's, you know, serving a really functional purpose. So that means a lot to me. The overall weight of the hammer, really happy. Feels quite nice, it's got enough punch, and yet it's still lightweight to be maneuverable and uh, wieldly. The copper has outperformed everything I could even imagine, it seriously performs amazing. The leather side, eh, I would prefer to use a much thicker, more durable leather. I would go to my local leather maker or uh, belt maker and ask if I could have some of the scraps of them, you'll either pay a very low fee or they might even be free. So you'll end up with a really, really high quality leather that will just be so much more durable than you could get out of this much thinner leather that I've used. Apart from that, extremely happy with how it's turned out. Can't wait to start using it as a, a functional tool. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It really does actually mean the world to me. Every time I get a subscriber, there's usually a little happy dance. Um, anyway, I'll uh, hopefully be able to buy myself a new jersey as well because it's getting pretty cold around here. Right, thank you so much guys. I'll uh, catch you guys, catch you next time. I'm going to stop saying guys. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Bye.